So now we know that the difference between the invoice receipt value and the goods receipt value is also going to be posted to our stock account and is going to impact our moving average cost. Now, what if by the time we receive the invoice, we have already sold some of the stock we have? So let's go back to our example. On 1st of January, we received 10 shares for 10 USD each. So the moving average is 10 USD per share. Now, on the 2nd of January, we sold 8 shares. So now the remaining stock value we have is 20 USD and the remaining stock quantity we have is only 2 shares. Now on the 3rd of January, we received the invoice from the supplier for 10 shares. But the price is 12 USD per share instead of 10. So as we agreed, the difference between the invoice receipt value and the goods receipt value should be posted to our stock account. So the difference is 120 USD in invoice receipt minus 100 USD in goods receipt so we have a difference of 20 USD. Now, if we add the 20 USD to our stock account that we only have two units remaining now, then the total stock value is going to be 40 USD and the stock quantity is two units. So the moving average is 20 USD per chair, which is completely wrong because the moving average should be 12 USD per chair only. So how can we solve this issue? We are going to solve it by only posting the difference related to the two units to our stock account and the remaining of the difference we are going to post to another expense account that is not going to impact our moving average. So in our example, the 20 USD we have are related to 10 shares. So we are going to post only 4 USD to the two units we have and the remaining 16 USD is going to be posted to an expense account. So now the, sto the stock value we have is going to be 20 USD plus 4, which is 24 USD. The stock quantity we have is two pieces. So now the moving average is 12 USD per share, which is correct. Now what happens to the 16 USD that is not going to be posted to the stock? We are going to post it to an expense account that we call a price difference account. And the price difference account should be related or linked to our cost of goods sold account. 